please welcome Justin Rosenstein as he explains why the future of work isn't email. Thank you, Justin. There are people at this conference working on huge ambitions. I've met people who are aiming to feed two billion more people over the next couple decades, to scale clean energy, to bring health care to every corner of the globe, or to find an untapped market niche and attack it with passion and excellence. Many of you in this room are working on ambitions at huge scale. You know, people didn't always talk like this. These kinds of ambitions can make sailing some ships across the ocean or building a cathedral seem small in comparison. Yet we are crazy enough to think that we can do this. And you know what? We can. Because as of very recently, we now have the ability to coordinate collective action and scale up what humans can do in a completely unprecedented way, to be able to really exponentially increase the power of human intelligence. But what if we told any of these visionaries that they had to accomplish their goals working just 15 to 20 hours a week? And with the rest of their time, they couldn't work out or dream or rejuvenate. Nope. They had to sit at their desk and play Minesweeper. Now, you'd laugh at this, right? But that is effectively what we're doing. Because the average knowledge worker literally spends 30% of their time on email alone. 30%. And another 20% is spent hunting down information that someone else in their organization already has. Actually, just a second ago, I mentioned email. Did that prompt you to want to check yours? But hold off, because what I'm going to tell you is going to be the first step in claiming back your time for your mission. So, we're going to that for a second. How did we wind up spending half our time talking about work instead of actually spending the time doing work? It's because collaboration has gotten so much more complex at the same time that the tools that we use haven't innovated nearly enough to keep up. Because when you think about it, innovation is not about doing the old thing just faster. You know, a car is not a faster horse and buggy. A computer is not a faster typewriter. But what about email and documents, the tools that most of us in this room probably use to try to coordinate our complex operations every single day? These are just faster paper. And paper is great for writing a letter or delivering a press release. And email and documents allow us to do these things even better. But they're just not complex tools. They're just not sophisticated tools for enabling us to coordinate large numbers of people. And that's why we're going crazy. We're trying to coordinate these massive thousand-person endeavors with an electronic version of the post office. Now, some of the tools we use aren't based on paper. You have CRMs or bug tracking, which are tools that have revolutionized their respective industries. But the vast majority of coordination at work is still done using email and documents. In fact, we generate literally 100 billion work emails every single day. That is insanity. Faster paper is an insane way to coordinate. The way that we're working isn't working. We need a better way. Now, fortunately, there's a proven way out. So once upon a time, all information was stuck in piles. An encyclopedia is a pile of information, an incredible amount of human knowledge, but it's stuck in alphabetical order. A phone book is a pile of names and numbers. Maps, memos, documents, plans, these are all piles. And these were good enough for a while. But then something huge happened. People figured out how to liberate the information that was in the pile and make it sortable, taggable, searchable, slice and diceable, so that you could get exactly the set of information that you needed 
at any given time. It's the difference between the pile that is your personal address book and the social graph that is Facebook. I mean, we're talking about billions of people who are able to coordinate and, and are able to stay connected to each other in ways that just wouldn't have been possible before. I mean, imagine trying to plan a high school reunion or you know, let alone organize a million-man march using just paper and email. But it wasn't that long ago that that's all that we had available to us. We're talking about the difference between a card catalog and the information graph that is the World Wide Web. The difference between a Rolodex and the professional graph that is your LinkedIn network. These shifts have changed our world. I mean, social graphs have completely redefined the way that we interact with our communities. Information graphs have allowed us to harness information in ways that just weren't possible before. And yet the one place that we still tolerate these piles of virtual paper is in the workplace, with the endless email and documents that still come across our desk every single day. So we know conceptually how to solve this problem, because we've solved it in our informational, in our professional, in our, in our social lives. And we will solve it in our work lives. And so today, I want to introduce to you what we call the work graph. What the work graph does is liberate the information we need, like what do we need to do, who's responsible, when's it supposed to get done, and brings that information to a place that we can actually harness it. This is why we've been so passionate at Asana about building this work graph. And I feel like we've come a long way, but we still have a very long ways to go. So to understand this work graph, think first of a social graph. So where a social graph is made up of nodes of people, a work graph is made up of nodes of work, individual units, tasks, calendar entries, et cetera. And so in a social graph, it's people that get metadata assigned to them. So education, location, sexual preferences, pictures of their hamsters. And then relationships are mapped between them. So once that's done, anyone can view their relationships in all kinds of unique and useful ways. So you know, who from my college now lives in my town? Or who's a, a friend of a friend who might want to date me and also look after my hamster? Well, units of work in the work graph get metadata too. But in this case, it's attached files, comments on the work, who's responsible, all, all the sort of information around it. And then relationships between the units of work get mapped as well, starting from the task and then all the different pieces and how they fit together, because we actually put the work itself at the center of this graph. And so now, what you've got is a single shared source of truth, this one common mental representation that everyone is able to look at integrates everything that everyone's work going on, who's responsible for what, when it's due, all the conversations, all the information, all in one place. I mean, how crazy is it that most organizations don't have one of these? And now, the pile and the endless email threads, which once were trying desperately to describe this map of the truth, can stop. Because you can actually see and directly manipulate that source of truth instead of talking around it. You can view your work in all kinds of useful ways that just with the old way of doing things would have been so painstaking. So for example, something that you want to know all the time as a leader, and yet information that almost no company can really give you off the top of, of extremely easily is, what are all the steps left between now and us accomplishing our next goal? But with the work graph, click, done. We can just pull that information out immediately. No more worrying that on launch day, we'll discover 10 things that have fallen through the cracks, which is certainly something that I used to experience. Or let's say I want to know every morning, what are the most important things that I can work on today? Click, done. The work app can just tell me. I mean, how would you go through your emails or your chats and try to figure this information out? It would take you hours, right? Or let's say I want to know, what work has my team accomplished in the last seven days? And what work are they going to accomplish in the next seven days? Click, done. I can literally cancel the status meeting, because the work graph can just give me that information. 
Or let's say I want to know, you know how Julia and Josh decided to choose our machine vendor six months ago. No need to bug them, because everything in the work graph is public by default. So I can just search for that particular task, find the conversation, look inside, and see exactly how they made the decision. Or maybe I cared about how Jack was doing on building some new mobile feature that he's working on. But now that he and Alex are getting into the details, I'm OK with not participating in that conversation. No problem. I can just click, unfollow, and be done with it. So because with the work graph, I'm subscribed to exactly the set of nodes that I care about, I don't need to be stuck being CC'd on endless email threads. And once you have all this information in this format, suddenly you can extract all these really useful insights from the data structure as a whole. So for example, as a leader, I want to know all the time, across all the most important projects that I'm working on, what warrants my attention? How are things going? The work graph can literally just pull that information out. We can see, even graph for you, exactly how each project is doing, what's on track, what needs your attention. Or maybe I care, I want to see, over the next two months, what are all the deadlines that we're working on? And I want to see that actually rendered in a way where it's on a calendar. I mean, if you were to do that with email or documents, you'd, you'd just sort of have to hope that you hadn't missed some email that said, oh, actually, it's due December 5th instead of December 2nd. Here, I can just pull that information out and see it rendered automatically. Or if I have 15 minutes to spare, and I want to see what are the most important things I can do right now, click, done, no more Minesweeper. So all these things are technically possible with email and documents, and, and we do them. And that's why we literally spend half our time wa wasting our time doing this sort of work about work. But we don't have to anymore. Because email is not the future of work. The work graph is the future of work. And this is just the beginning. Because the work graph becomes a platform that lets users and developers constantly come up with new ways to sort, pivot, structure this data, or even create new data types. So for example, Nanosphere is this molecular diagnostics company. And their researchers use Asana to track all of the different experiments that they're running as part of their lab work. And currently, they do that in Asana using use, sort of structuring those experiments as tasks, but we're building functionality that will allow them to make them first class nodes. So they can have experiment specific metadata right there in the work graph along with all their other things. And as we expand this platform to developers, we'll see whole pieces of software built as node types in this work graph. So in the future, let's say you have a startup that wants to help venture capitalists manage their deal flow. All they have to do is build a custom schema with custom views and custom code. And suddenly, they'll have all this rich functionality. And it integrates deeply into all of the other sort of objects that that venture capital firm is managing. So Facebook has a billion people nodes. And Asana today already has 250 million work nodes. And that number is growing exponentially. When I think of how our world has changed over the last 20 years, thanks to this transition from piles to graphs, I'm just continually amazed. We've invented entirely new and radically better places to stay connected with the people we love, build our professional lives, harness information. But where do we keep our work, the place that allows us to manifest our creative potential, to give our gifts to the world? Are you keeping that in an inbox? Every time a new technology appears that enables better human collaboration, whether that's the web or the telephone, or even going back to writing and language, we see this stepwise change in what human beings are able to accomplish. And the work graph is going to be no different. Because suddenly, instead of passing messages back and forth, the work graph serves as this kind of neural network that a whole team can use as a kind of team brain that keeps everyone perfectly in sync. I mean, by, if, if the WorkCraft could improve people's ability to work together by even 20%, what kind of changes could we see in the world? What kind of progress could we enable? We're already enabling a ton. Udacity, a pioneer in online learning, sets up new virtual courses in Asana, enabling more professors to create more quality content and deliver that to more students. Uber, every time they want to create a new city, set up a new city, all they have to do is take the workflow they've already created in Asana 
and instantiate it, and they have all the different tasks they have to do, assigned, and they can assign it to the right people. They can just go through one at a time. No more endless email threads. Everything is tracked and checked off one by one. So you know, Udacity is changing the face of learning. Uber is redefining the whole concept of mobility. What are the next projects people will dare to undertake that they couldn't have before? Now, there's definitely a learning curve moving from virtual paper to the work graph. But we find that teams say they, within a week, they're seeing transformative results. We're building the work graph at Asana because we want to help you and every team out there with big dreams to be able to make those a reality. Whether you're building the next great company, feeding people who go to bed hungry, reversing climate change, or improving the lives of your customers. And because I don't think you'll do it like this. By working together in teams and organizations, we can do great things. It's time we got past our piles of email, got clarity about our work, and got it done. Thank you.